into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. When he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him into the holy city, setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him, up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, the splendor, the excellency, the wealth of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels come and ministered unto him. I, I want to talk for the few moments that are left to me. Formalize your faith. Formalize my faith. Formalize your faith. You may be seated. I'm expediting. According to philosophy, to understand what something is and looks like, we must understand what it is not. Philosophy teaches us that the road to comprehension is often lined with the grace to reject. That before you can really understand what a thing is, you have to understand what it is not. So let us examine the opposite of formal, which is informal. Uh, informal is defined as having <clears throat> an unofficial standing. Unpostured for authoritative operation unprepared for conclusive expression, unproductive in critical representation. Say that again, informal. I could preach a two-week revival just on this definition. Informal is having an unofficial standing. It is based on everything other than what it is is unofficial. Secondly, it is unpostured for authoritative operation. It works but is not in charge. It's there, but it can't be depended on. It's a part of me, but it has not consumed me. Thirdly, it is unprepared for conclusive expression, which says I express it sometimes and sometimes not in form. Finally, unproductive in critical representation. I cannot depend on it to always represent me because it is in form. We, we have to be careful that we don't operate with an in Formal faith. It's like being in an informal marriage. In case you missed all that other stuff I just said. Uh, an informal marriage and informal friendship. Sometimes I'm with you, sometimes I'm 
Not sometimes I got you, sometimes I don't. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes. An informal marriage is something that has no official standing. We ain't got no paperwork, we just live together. It, it's not formal, but because it works for us in this season, we go with it. In formal. It does not have authoritative operation. It works as it works. So as long as it's working, we're working. But the time is going to come where it's going to be tried. Glory to God. And if it's tried and it's not authoritative, what worked ain't going to work. No more. It's unprepared for conclusive expression. You ask me whether I'm married or not, my answer depends on the moment I'm in. You married this week. Right now, yes. We, we, we chilling. And you start having to bring up these other words to kind of compensate for what it is not. I'm, I'm, I'm going on. An informal faith is a faith of convenience. It's easy to carry and it is without intrusion on the personal will. An informal faith is light. Like this uh, Shamir I got on. It's light. It doesn't intrude on anything. It doesn't inhibit anything. It doesn't restrict anything. The only thing it does is covers me. Informal faith, it conforms to the individual rather than conforming the individual. If your faith works for you, it is not the faith. It is informal because the faith is standard. It does not conform to us. It conforms us to it. It brings us into the image of Christ. But when we operate in an informal faith, we have a Sunday image of Christ and a Sunday night image of however we feel. And the Monday morning image of whatever's going on on Monday morning. Because our faith is present, but it's in form. This standing of faith diminishes conviction. Y'all not going to like me. You're going to wish you had just danced on to the end of the service. Informal faith reduces conviction. It says to conviction, all that ain't necessary. It says to conviction, God knows my heart. And informal, yes, I go to church. Yes, I know how to dance. Yes, I know how to quake and jake. But my faith is informal because I am free to do whatever I want to do and I put it on God understand. How would you feel if people handled you any kind of way and said but you still love them? How used and manipulated would you feel if people handled you however they wanted to knowing what you required and still when against everything you required and expected and still said, but you love me. God forgive us for handling you like we're not in relationship with you. For handling you with a long handled spoon like you're just God and not Abba You don't want to hurt your daddy's feelings. You want to keep your daddy happy. You want to do whatever it takes to keep a smile on his face. And so you adjust yourself for your daddy. Or has society become so fatherless you have no model? 
do we not know how to treat a father because we've never had one? Are we so diminished that we don't know how to handle God in the spiritual because we've not had the models in the natural? So we talk to everybody any kind of way because we've never had to respect anybody. We treat our elders like brothers and sisters. God help us. Informal faith diminishes conviction. It devalues high standards. An informal faith rejects and is even bitter at high standards. It gets irritated at somebody else's standards. Because their high standard reminds you of where you should be that you have made yourself okay with not being. Do you know why some folk can't stand you? They don't even know you, but they see your standard. Because even when you dress down, you dress well. And they get irritated that you so well dressed all the time. Why are you why you can't just come down and be like the rest of us? Because my name is Nehemiah and I'm doing a great work. I, I gotta hurry through here. Informal faith devalues high standard. You, uh, you always got to pray like that. I mean, every time, every time I hear you praying, you're going all the way in. You got to go all the way in every time. You can't just ever have a regular prayer like the rest of us. First of all, you ain't the representation of the rest of us. Secondly, no, I don't pinch hit for nobody. Every time I get a chance to praise him, I go to 100. Every time I get a chance to pray, every time I get a chance to preach, even when ain't none of y'all around, when it's me and pews, I go at 100. Shucks, I lose it in rehearsal. Because I ain't no half player. I'm all the way every time. So don't ask me to just sing for you in front of a group of people. Because if you do, the glory is coming. Because I'm going all the way in. Basha. I have a play on in Detroit that fell in love with me singing something. I did it one time. I was playing. And I was just playing around. And then the glory came. Now every time I see it, she asked me to sing it. And it's Mary Had a Little Lamb. So she said, sing Mary had a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Sing Mary had a little lamb. Then she'd back up off me. And I said, Mary had a little lamb. Little lamb. Little lamb. lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. Everywhere that Mary went. Mary went. His name was Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus is the Lamb. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is the Lamb. And by the end of Mary had a little lamb, we crying and shouting. Why? Because I ain't praying with it at no time. You got to quit playing with stuff and be 100 or be zero. But if you have anything, if you're lukewarm, he said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. The standing of informal faith diminishes conviction, devalues high standard. Thirdly, it diminishes uncompromised commitment. Informal faith says there is no need for you to be uncompromisingly committed. Diminishing faith says, listen, un, 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 um, formalized faith says, informal faith says, 
Ain't no need in you being that committed. Ain't nobody that committed to you. You ain't got to be there 30 minutes before service every time. You ain't always got to do this and you ain't got to be that committed. What are they doing for you? What are you getting out of it? You need to tell them you're seeing my natural contribution but I'm receiving an invisible reward. You don't understand that when I was vacuuming the floor, he healed my back. That saved me about $40,000 in doctor's bills. You don't understand when I got there early and was in prayer that prayer changed my mind and it saved me from a five year prison sentence that would have put a felony on my record and I wouldn't have been able to get a good job man in my life. You don't understand. You're only looking at the visible but I came to tell you I got so many rewards that I get out of loving God and serving God with uncompromised commitment that I can't even count them. I have to praise God more for what he didn't allow than what he did. You stuck in praising God for a visible blessing. You better praise God for an invisible mercy. You better praise God for invisible grace. He didn't bust your head when he should have. He didn't clean your clock when he should have. He allowed you to get by with things that you know you were wrong in and he didn't punish you. You acted that way and you were still anointed. You acted that way and his hand was still on you. You ought to praise him. So God, coming to the text now, so God, so God in his will that all be saved. You do know that it is the will of God that all be saved and none be lost. You better read your Bible. It is the will of God. So in his will that all be saved, he allows temptation. To accomplish his purpose of getting us to formalize our faith. I submit to you before we dive in. That the whole reason Jesus had to endure the great temptation. Was because his next level required him to formalize his faith. And it only happens when you're tempted. Come go with me. Now, your current season of temptation is designed to stand you up in your faith. You missed it. Your current season of temptation is the devil, but it's the devil sent by God. You can't handle it. Your current season of temptation, the spirit of the Lord led you into it and dropped you off to temptation and left you there. Where you are right now is a season where God is trying you for your next dimension. He's not trying you for him. He's trying you for the dimension sake. He's going to love you regardless. But what I love about God. Is that he wants more for me. He'll love me living in the, in the, under a bridge. And just giving my heart to him. But his love for me wants to elevate me every time he sees me. Every time I come into his presence, he wants to take me higher. I wish I had somebody that would write that song. He wants to take me higher. So my God looks at me and says, long enough. You've been on that level in that dimension. Long enough. And he begins to set up what it's going to take to elevate you. Uh, virtually tap your neighbor and tell him God said long enough. 
Now, the reason won't nobody help you is because God said long enough. The, the reason people turn you down for assistance that you know they can give you is because God says, I'm going to get all the glory out of this. Y'all ain't shouting now. The reason the people that got money in your family won't help you right now is because God shut them down. Because God said, I'm going to do this. Because I'm delivering you from asking. I'll bring you to a place where you ain't going to have to ask nobody for nothing. How about shot? Not out of a bitterness, but out of a blessing. You, you're not going to be mad, but you ain't going to have to ever ask nobody for nothing. And if you have to borrow $20 just because you couldn't get to the bank, you're going to be able to give them back 200 to shut their mouth up. You get ready to come to a place. Y'all don't know when to shout. Jesus has just been baptized by John. Come on, all day ministers, we talked about this today. Jesus has just been baptized by John. That was his confirmation. That was his confirmation. When he came straightway out of the water, 3 and 17, when he came straightway out of the water, the Bible says what? That the dove descended as the Holy Spirit, and then a voice spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. That's confirmation. He gave him public identity. Right? That was confirmation. He comes straight out of confirmation right into consecration. Who comes out of confirmation? Peter, thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. You go from confirmation to celebration, right? Wrong. You go from confirmation into consecration. After the father gives him his identity, my beloved son, and I'm good with it. I don't care what y'all think about it. I'm good with him. And if I'm good with him, you be good with him. I gave him his identity. And he goes from getting an identity into consecration. 40 days. 40 nights. In the wilderness. 40 days. 40 nights in the wilderness. No TV, no phone, no internet, no reception, no nothing, no radio, no fresh clothes, no bathtub, no nothing. He goes into the in-between. He goes into a place that was never considered to be there. It was always considered to be on the way to. The Holy Ghost that descended as the dove now leads him into a place that is not a place. He leads him into a state that you cannot make a place. He leads him into a place that you cannot build, you cannot create, you cannot do anything but go through it. Some of us have been led to a state that we made a place. Because we think in every state we're supposed to be comfortable. But the Bible does not say in every state be comfortable. It said in every state be content. Content is a temporary state. It says, it says in this in-between place, 
I'm going to take you to nowhere and expect you to go through it. When you get to nowhere, things seemingly come out of Now let's follow the text because I saw something I never saw before. You ready? Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness. So he was either in a low place when he was confirmed or the wilderness was higher than his current operation. Either way, my current state is still up. That wasn't even the point I was trying to show you. But either way, where I am right now is still up, up, up. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted. Okay. He fasted 40 days and nights. In the wilderness. So when the temptation came, he had been there 40 days and nights. Now, the number 40 means the end of a thing. If 40 means the end of a thing, I should have been coming out on 40. But on 40, it was turn up. Here again, regardless of what happened, it's still up. Says, says uh, he fasted 40 days and nights in the wilderness. He's in this in-between place. He fasts 40 days and nights here because he never really wants to see it. Fasting allows you to be somewhere and never see it. Because I was there, but I was never there. I was, I was there, but I never really engaged myself there because I lost myself in fasting. I so consecrated myself in that season of hurt that I never really tasted the hurt. Too many of us are too attentive in every season. Some of us are too present in every season. Some stuff you go into, you're never supposed to taste it. You're supposed to come out with no mud on your feet. But you're so sensual that you engage Every feeling, emotional, and state. You'll even say, I want to feel this. And you understand it's a nowhere. What you're doing is creating a memory in a nowhere. And the memory has the power to keep bringing you back to no. Y'all don't want to talk to me today. Your bondage is not a real thing. It's a memory of a nowhere. Because in nowhere, all you talked about was nothing. Consecration in the wilderness, 40 days. He's intentionally dedicating his faculties to be conformed to God's vision. I can't afford to see in the wilderness. So God, turn on your light and let me see what you're showing me. You got to stop going through stuff saying, oh my God, this hurts so bad. You got to start saying, Lord, what are you trying to show me? 
What are you trying to tell me so I can get on out of here? I, I, I don't want to go through all this. I don't want this prolonged. I don't want this elongated. I just need to know, Lord, what are you saying to me in this? Because I know this is you talking to me. And the reason I know this is you, because I ain't in the devil's hands. Because I'm in your hands. I know you've allowed this season. I know you've allowed this moment. I know you've allowed this temptation. So help a brother out. What are you saying? My focus remains on you regardless of what I'm going. I got 10 minutes. Consecration can be religious. When consecration is religious, it is called preventive maintenance. Hey. I got you. Uh, when consecration is consistent, that's what we call religious. You do it all the time. When, when, you, when you do it frequently, when you have a daily consecration, and a weekly consecration. And you make sure every day you have a devotion in the morning. And you have a closeout celebration at night. And when you make sure you fast at least two days out of the week. To give some time to God. Because you give your time so much to Netflix. And you give so much time to movies. And you give so much time to sitcoms. And you give so much time to the job. And you got so much stress. That you know you need to dedicate. Present your body. A living sacrifice holy. You need to do that at least sometimes during the week. You need to set aside some time. Where your spirit get charged and not your soul. You need to set aside some time where it ain't about what you feel, think and, and desire and all of that. It's about what God is speaking in this moment. You need to have a consecration. You need to do it religiously so some things you never get into. God is able to restore an engine that locked up because of no oil but he'd rather keep oil in the car so that it never locks up. Now unto him who is able to keep us. We're so used to getting up that we haven't learned how to stay up. Church really don't like me now. I'm, I'm, hurry, I'm hustling along. And, and so we go from confirmation to consecration. We go from consecration right into temptation. See, if the devil was smart, he'd have got us right after confirmation. But he was crazy enough to wait until you af after you consecrated to then come and tempt you. Boy, I'm strong now. He comes to Jesus and he says, uh, uh, here's, here's what I need to do for you. He says, um, I need to try your belief system. Uh, and God is using me to strengthen and settle it. So I'm doing it to prove to you that you're not who you say you are. Rewind, play that again. The devil says, I'm doing this to prove to you that you are not who God says you are. The devil says, I really don't care about you. I'm really trying to make a fool out of God. So if God says you're this, then the devil is out to disprove God so that you can show God that he's a liar. So the devil says, let me get you to disprove God. So God says, you're his beloved son in whom he is well pleased. Let me show him that he ain't pleased with you. And let me show him through you. So he comes at him. He comes at him. I'm gone. He comes at him. He, he says, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, let's see if you, if I can get you to pervert, here it comes, your anointing. This entire, I'm closing, this entire temptation was designed to get Jesus to pervert his anointing. I got proof. He says, all right, he says, here's what I want you to do. He says, first thing, he says, take this stone. Take this stone and do what? Turn it into bread. Turn it into bread. Take this stone, turn it into bread. Take this stone and turn it into bread. What I want you to do is I want you to be self-serving with your anointing. 
take your anointing and use it to satisfy yourself. Jesus says, he looks at the stone. He's hungry. He's testing the lust of the flesh. He's hungry. He can turn a stone into bread if somebody else needed it. But if I do it to serve myself, then I'm perverting my anointing. That's why your anointing don't work on you. It work on everybody else. But you got to live by faith while they get to live by your power. Your anointing. Now, he could have said, eat this stone. And Jesus would have been able to do that. Because the miracle would have happened in his mouth. Got no church, y'all sleep. But he says, turn it. In other words, give me evidence that you'll use your anointing to satisfy yourself. Number two, uh, he, he, he takes him. I'm, I'm struggling with this language. Uh, the devil taketh him in temptation that the spirit delivered you into the devil has charge of you. Not over your choices but over your arena. No, y'all not ready for this. The devil has freedom in the temptation that the Spirit of God led you into. He has freedom to recreate your reality. He creates illusions for you to step into that are not real. So the devil taketh him. And I asked Jesus, why are you going with the devil? He says, because I was delivered to him. I can't take you there. I, I can't take you there. He says, I was delivered to him. And the reason he and I don't always fight is because we're from the same father. So before I was the light of the world, he was the morning star. So he and I, watch this, we are juxtaposed to each other not because we hate each other, but because of our relative stand toward the Father. That's right. He is a problem for me because he's a problem for the Father. Why do you have people in your life who are not a problem for you, but they're a problem for your Father? you in fellowship wow. with who hates your father. Wow. Come on, Bishop. Wow. I'm out of there. He says, he taketh him up into the holy city. You missed this. He takes him home. The second temptation happens at your house. The first temptation happens at your hunger. The
The second temptation happens at your house. He takes him into the holy city. Setting him on a pinnacle of the temple. He sets him in his place. He puts him in his chair in his house. And he says, if thou be, you're in your place, you're in your house, but I need to know if you really believe that this is your place and this is your house. So if you be the pastor's apostolic adjunct, the if awakens the identity of doubt. The if is searching for the question mark in you. It's looking for a place in your psyche. Not even in your heart. But in your thinking. Are you sure? Are you sure? So he says, if you be the son of God. Now he just told him he was. Thou art my beloved son. See, Satan heard the confirmation too. And he's going to use it against you. I got to go. If thou be. The son of God. Here's what I want you to do. Cast yourself down. Because it is written. Now you came on me with scripture. I was here too. So let me show you. I was there when he talked to Moses too. You do know Moses wrote the Pentateuch. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The devil said I was there when he talked to So I know the story too. In fact, I was in the story. In fact, in fact, before the let us showed up, my work was in verse 2. So don't think I don't know the word too. So he says, now for it is written. It's the devil talking now. So you think that if the devil speak the word that he's going to implode. Just blow up into a, a, a pillar of salt. He knows the word. He can just never be the word. So he's trying to keep you from who know it from ever becoming it. He's trying to keep you from being a now are we. He wants to keep you in what you used to be. And what you feel like being. I'm, I'm, I'm gone. He says, cast yourself down. But it is written. He did, Listen, you know the angels are going to catch you. You know you're not going to hit the ground. You know if you do this, He's going to preserve you. The temptation was not to sin. Do you think the devil always wants you to uh, lie, cuss, steal, cheat, and fornicate? He says, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, the temptation here is not to sin. The temptation here is to make an open show of your anointing. And to prove to everybody who you are without suffering. Your confirmation comes without suffering. But when people come to know who you are, you are going to suffer to get that knowledge. The devil says, no, 
on, just jump from this high pinnacle. Angels going to catch you, and you're going to be all right. What the devil is not telling him is people are going to see you jump because they're watching you the whole time. Tell your neighbor, you in temptation and they're still watching you. They're watching you the whole time. He's not telling you that when you jump, everybody's going to look and see angels catch you and you float back down to the earth and then by illegal evidence, they're going to believe who you are. He says, I don't want illegal evidence. So while I could do it, and you're right, the angels do have charge over me. He you said, you're right. You got that. You got that right. You exegeted that well. That's what the text said. He says, but what I will not do is be attention amassing with my anointing. Thirdly, he takes him, he takes him up. I keep going up. Even when the devil mess with me, I go up. And he takes him up. I'm getting ready to close. He takes him up uh, into an exceeding high mountain. Showeth him all the kingdoms of the world. And the glory of them. He shows them the kingdoms of the world. Now granted. The kingdoms of the world are now. Under the authority of Satan. By virtue of mortgaging them to him. From Adam. So Satan or Lucifer if you will. Whatever you want to call him. He does have authority over the kingdoms of the world. But he is not responsible for their glory. Certain things that you desire should keep you because you see glory in it. And that glory is only from God. So then I will not pervert myself to get it only to come into a glory perverted. Amen. Church is so quiet right now. He says, uh, what I want you to do from this mountain says, I want you to just bow down and worship me. I'm going to give you all of it. I'm going to give you the provision without pain. I know you see the cross from where you're standing. And you know what you've got to go through to get the kingdom. I want to show you that you can have the kingdoms without going through that. Payment. Don't worry about that. We got that. Just in says, pay the price, then you can have it. So that when you get it, there's nothing to pay. It's one thing to wear a full length black diamond mink coat with the hat to match and you making payments on it. It's another thing when the receipt is in the inside pocket. The enemy wants to give you your dreams without suffering, without pain, without struggle, without take it now. All you got to do is worship me. What you don't know is I'm a devil though. You knew my name. I'm a devil and I'm going to give you hell afterwards. Yes, 
because he says, here, get this wife now. Do your vows later. Don't go through no process. Don't move out your mama's house and stand on your own and make it before you take on responsibility. No, don't do it like that. That's the old way. You move from mama's house into her house. From mama's couch, it's a quiet church now, onto her couch. Because don't you love each other? Love don't pay no bills. And I feel sorry for a woman that'll take a man from, her mo- from his mama's house and bring him to hers. I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. Because what you've done is taken a boy and made him a husband. You got to stand on your own two feet before you can carry me. See, when I married her, her name, my name didn't become Culver. Her name became William. That means that's my responsibility. But I feel sorry for you because you were so in love and so desperate. And because you turned 30 and wasn't married yet. Some of us that got married at 22 regret it. 23. Like, doggone it, I should have waited. If I'd known then what I know now. That's why all the married folk want to be single and all the single folk want to be married. Church don't want to talk about a marriage conference right quick. And a singles conference in one. He said, will you be pain preventum and suffering shirking with your anointing? Bow to me, I'll give it to you now. I'll give it to you now. So we have confirmation. We have consecration. We have temptation. And then we have restoration. Jesus answers him and says, listen, we only worship God. Don't, if I got to worship you to get this job, you can take this job and uh, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> y'all finish. I, I'm, I'm not going to worship you to get a position. I'm not going to worship you to get a car. I'm not going to bend over to get a, a, a part. I, I'm just not going to do it because I only, I only bow down to God. Come on, somebody. I don't bow down for you. If I got to take it in the back to get this position, you can have that position. I don't care how much money you offering me because money can't give me my manhood back. Ain't nobody talking to me in here. Money can't give me my dignity back. Money can't give me my identity back. So you can have it. I'll wait on the Lord. Y'all ain't saying nothing, but it's a whole lot of people bending over to get what they want. But the devil said, just bend over, I'll give it to you. They're taking you into high rooms. How bad do you want it? Not that bad, boss. No. Oh, you, we going where? To a what? No, we ain't. Well, I just want, you can talk right here. Hey, you can talk by text. We can Zoom. I'm not. comes, comes, talking about formalizing your faith. Jesus answers him the last time and says, get away from me. Get the hints. Go on now. Go on where you're going. Jesus comes to a place in his spirit that he says, that's enough. There is a dimension called toleration. 
where you allow a thing to, to kind of go on for a while, but there comes a moment where you say, hey, hey, now, wait a minute, hold on, now, that, 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 that's enough right there. Jesus said, hey, 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 brother, that, that's enough. He says, let me help you with something. Uh, you know we only supposed to be worshiping the Father. I know you can't do it no more, but I can. So, so let's, you go on where you're going because I've had enough. And the Bible says, then the devil leaveth him. Oh, that's such good news uh, because it says my temptation is not everlasting. Mm. It says my temptation is not ever enduring. That there's something that comes after temptation. And what comes after temptation is restoration. Everything that the army I sent to you, the caterpillar, the locust, the canker worm, uh, have eaten and taken away. He said, I will restore. Uh, he says, tear this temple down and in three days I will build it back up. There is restoration. Uh, I wish you could lean on your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, uh, I'm on my way uh, into my time of restoration. I wish you could tell somebody out of the faith down in your belly that I'm on my way into a time of restoration. The Bible says, and the angels came and ministered unto him. That word ministered is deaconeo, and it is one the word that we get deacon from. So as the deacon is to the church that is responsible for waiting the tables, making sure everybody is taken care of, ensuring the maintenance of the building, ensuring the teaching of the saints, so were the angels that came to Jesus. Here is the good news. The devil leaveth him and angels come and minister unto him lean on somebody and tell your neighbor I fought one devil but I'm being repaired by many angels lean yeah on somebody and tell them I fought one devil but I'm being renewed I'm being restored uh, by many angels. Uh and the Bible says uh, they came to serve him. Uh, they came to be an attendant unto him. Uh, they came in a domestic capacity. Uh, they came to wait upon him. They waited upon him physically. Uh, they waited upon him emotionally. Uh, they waited upon him psychologically. Uh, they said, we're going to help get your mind back right. Uh, I know uh, you've been through a rough season. Season, uh, but we're coming now uh, to restore uh, the spirit of your mind. Uh, lean on somebody uh, and say, Neighbor, uh, my last storm uh, shook my mind, uh, but thanks be unto God, uh, I'm being restored uh, in my mind. Uh, my last battle. Uh, shook my appetite uh, but now uh, I'm being restored uh, in my appetite uh, I lost weight uh, that I didn't mean to lose uh, I acted some ways uh, that I didn't mean to act uh, but now uh, I feel the spirit of restoration I'm starting to feel better now I'm starting to feel better now. I feel my mind coming back to me. I feel love coming back to me. I feel praise coming back to me. I'm sorry for how I acted in my last season. I'm sorry I didn't speak to you every time I should have. And I know you didn't know uh, what I was going through. Uh, but now uh, I want to testify. Uh, he's restoring me. He's restoring me. Uh, I'm 
getting my confidence back. I'm getting my joy back. I'm getting my peace back. I'm getting my hunger and thirst for righteousness back. I'm getting my praise back. I'm getting my service back. Tell your leader I'll be back. I'm coming back to the usher board. I'm coming back to security. I'm coming back to the nurses board. I'm coming back to the choir. Wherever supposed to serve I feel my restoration and I I'm coming back I'm coming back I'm getting my faithfulness back I'm getting my dedication back I'm getting my accountability back I'm getting my love back yeah you got yeah, I couldn't stand you, but now, uh, now, I'm on the comeback trail, I'm on comeback avenue, I'm on comeback road, I'm getting my strength back, I'm getting my intimacy with God back, I'm going to be back double whatever I was before I left when I come back I'm coming back double because he's giving me double for my shame say yes say yeah I'm coming back better than ever than ever I'm coming back healed like never before I... so this is my comeback praise this is the my last praise in the wilderness this is my last praise in nowhere this is the last time that I dance in between because after this I'm coming out after this praise angels are going to escort me out say tell your neighbor get ready we're getting ready to praise him Get your feet ready. Get your shoulders ready. Get your hands ready. Get your attitude ready. This is my restoration praise. This is my restoration praise. Get ready. This is my restoration. Y'all hear me, don't you? Get ready. This is my restoration praise. Somebody, anybody, everybody, 